Most of you guys are probably familiar with the first look sensors. They're typically um, used to determine um, cylinder contribution in a vehicle. And you uh, would shove that in the tailpipe of a car and hook it up to an oscilloscope. And you could see if there were any cylinders that were kind of lagging. Uh, the, the real first look sensor is very expensive, like about $400 US. And uh, many guys have taken to build their own. I don't know what's inside a first look, I've never taken one apart, but I do know what uh, components uh, most of the guys on the internet are using to build them. So my build is not all that different from that. And in particular, um, Forklift Geek has a really nice build and uh, my build is very, very, very similar to his with the, a couple of um, modifications. So it's so close that I've included a link to his uh, site, check him out. At the heart of these builds is these piezo sensors. And um, I yanked one out of a um, old smoke alarm. And for the life of me, I could never solder a wire on the center portion. And I uh, finally gave up. And I uh, ordered a bag of 10 from China for about three bucks. So that solved that problem except it takes weeks for that to get here, and it just got in today. That's how come I'm kind of eager to build this. Here are some of the components that I, that I use here. Very simple stuff. This is an inch and a half ABS cap. I drilled three one eighth holes, and in the center I drilled and filed a slot to accept a BNC connector. So that will go in here. All right. Um, a short piece of inch and a half ABS pipe so that this inch and a half coupling can fit. So, so much for that part of it. This is um, an inch and a half ABS reducer with a half inch pipe thread here in the center. And this is a piece that was laying around here. Um, small piece of plumbing, I think it's off of a small sink on the drain. And I cut that. I, and I no longer need this half. I don't need that. And the reason I liked it is that it's exactly the right diameter. It's kind of a, using it as a standoff for the piezo disc. So it will fit in here quite nicely. And the plan is to uh, use my hot glue gun and I'm going to glue this all around here. And then it's the right diameter for the piezo disc to sit on here and I will hot glue it here. And that's one of the um, uh, differences between my build and uh, Forklift Geek. I found that he, although his worked fine, he did a test afterwards and it worked just great. But his is closer to this, and I think it comes in contact with that end. And I don't think that you benefit from the full area of the disc because you're, you're too close to this here. So by having this in here, standing off and out here, I'm, I'm hoping it's an, a small improvement. Like I say, he, his seemed to work fine. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue all this. and. Um, We'll get back to you here. Okay, we're back. Um, I've done this seam with the hot glue gun. I've also glued the piezo disc to that surface. I've added some extra glue on the wiring to solidify that somewhat. They're pretty flimsy. I was able to determine with a voltmeter that in this orientation, when the pressure is positive here, the outside lead is the positive one and the center lead is the negative. Now I'm going to feed these wires through here and I'm going to solder them to this uh, BNC connector. Okay, got it soldered onto the BNC connector 
Um, the wire is all properly routed through the coupling and the nuts and washer. It's pretty tricky, you gotta be careful with that. Um, I ended up with a small problem here that I'm about to rectify. This area right here where I had, if you remember, I had put some uh, hot glue onto the wires. Well, it turned out that I don't have enough room for, uh, for this piece. It, there's interference here. So I, I pulled this back a little bit and now I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue just underneath it and leave it kind of propped up like that so that I'll uh, be able to assemble that. So the pieces are just going to be friction fit, they're not glued. Put this one on first. Should do it there. And that should leave me some room for that. I've got a lot of wire here, just curl, curl, and assemble that and press it all together, closed. That's that. So that's the piece. I prepared, a, this is the hose that will go into the exhaust pipe. On this one end is a barbed uh, adapter, half inch thread. Um, all this is is a piece of wire that um, is gonna suspend the hose from making contact to the hot exhaust pipe. Um, if, uh, kind of a point of interest, if you remember my build for the um, my paint can smoke um, machine, this is the handle that I pulled out uh, of that. So uh, we don't waste anything on this channel. So there, assembled. This goes on. And there's the complete assembly. That's all the hose I had. I hope it's uh, heat resistant enough. If not, I'll, I'll replace it. It just shrunk on here. And uh, the last thing that's left to do is for us to go out and uh, give it a test run. All right, so here's my setup. Transducer is kind of propped up on this little step ladder. The idea is to have it elevated so that if there's any condensation coming from the exhaust, it doesn't drain back into this transducer unit. BNC cable connected to the oscilloscope. The Ford Fusion is a four, is a four cylinder. Um, it shares a, one muffler, although it comes out like a, to make it pretend it's a dual exhaust. I plug the one side with a wet towel and I've got the hose inserted into the other side. So I've got the oscilloscope and the laptop set up. I'm uh, running the Windows HandTech uh, software uh, because I'm also going to be using screen recording uh, software on here. And um, I'm not quite ready to use the uh, Android tablet with 8 scope and also use the screen recording software. So um, here goes with this. I'll go start the car. So I'm using five megasecond divisions, which uh, provides one mega sample per second. I'll stop the recording and I'll zoom in on it a little bit. And there you are. There's my pattern. Four, it's a four cylinder engine. Looks okay to me and the device is working. Pretty happy with that for my first try and I hope you enjoyed the build.